Welcome to this presentation on interval training. Interval training was uh, developed by two guys by the name of Waldemar Gerschler and Hans Reindale in the 1930s. The idea with interval training works with the concept of stress, recover, adapt. If you want to improve fitness, you have to challenge your body, give your body time to recover, and then your body bounces back stronger. The major stimulus and the major stress that actually happens during interval training is during the recovery period. A lot happens during the work period, but it's actually the recovery period where your body gets the major stimulus. Why does that happen? Well, during the recovery period, your heart rate decreases from being elevated, and that causes some major things to happen. The intervals actually refer to the time period between the reps. In interval training, you work hard for a period of time, then you recover, then you work hard for a period of time, then you recover. It's actually during the recovery period that the intervals are actually referred to as intervals. Interval training can improve two major areas of endurance athletes, VO2 max and lactate threshold. Now for runners, your VO2 max is about the pace that you can maintain for 11 minutes. Your lactate threshold is about the pace that you can maintain for 45 minutes. For most runners, that would be somewhere for VO2 max between one and a half to two miles for lactate threshold between four to eight miles. If you're talking about other endurance sports like cycling or swimming, those numbers are going to be a little different for VO2 max and lactate threshold. But you can still think of the idea as the same. Now, why do intervals improve VO2 max and lactate threshold? Well, if your VO2 max is a pace, for example, that you can maintain for 11 minutes, if you can work at your VO2 max pace or a little faster for more than 11 minutes, there's going to be some benefit for that. But the only way you're going to do that is if you take breaks or, or rest or recovery time between intervals. For example, if you were to go at your VO2 max pace for four minutes and then you recover for three minutes, then you were to go at it for another four minutes and recover for three minutes, then go at it for four minutes, you spent a total of 12 minutes in your VO2 max pace, which is more than the 11 minutes that you could get if you just ran it all at once. Because of that, you can get more time at VO2 max or lactate threshold by breaking it up into inter intervals. And that's why interval training is very effective in improving VO2 max and lactate threshold. Let's talk about how intervals can affect your heart. And this is actually going to be primarily for VO2 max intervals. Just a quick review of the heart. There's four chambers. The two guys at the top are called atriums. The two guys at the bottom are called ventricles. The last, last ventricle of the blood leaves before going through this aorta here and being circulated throughout your body is the left ventricle. Therefore, the left ventricle is actually the largest chamber. And with interval training, your left ventricle actually gets a little larger and becomes stronger. And that's a huge benefit because a stronger left ventricle and a larger left ventricle means that more blood can pump out, which increases your maximum stroke volume, which gets more blood and oxygen to your working muscles, which helps you run better or perform whatever endurance activity you're doing more efficiently. During the recovery period, your heart rate declines. And because of that, this huge pool of blood returns to the heart and it fills up the left ventricle. So the left ventricle gets filled with this huge pool of blood. And as a result, you actually get an increase in stroke volume during the recovery period. Again, your stroke volume is actually at the highest it's going to be during the recovery period because the left ventricle has to deal with this huge pool of blood that comes back to the heart. And the heart rate has slowed down, so it's not beating as much. So therefore, it's going to have to really pump out all that blood, and your stroke volume is going to increase. We call this left ventricular hypertrophy, which happens when you increase in max of your stroke volume, and that allows more blood to pump and circulate throughout your entire body in the long run. Because what happens is your heart gets overloaded, therefore you're, you get a stronger heart, you're performing multiple intervals. So now you, your, your heart has several opportunities during the workout for the stroke volume to peak. And when the stroke volume improves, that improves the oxygen delivery throughout the working muscles of your body which makes you a better endurance athlete or distance runner. The keys for interval training. If you're trying to improve VO2 max, 
then you want to go at VO2 max pace or slightly faster. The work period should be at least two minutes. And then the recovery period should be less than the work period. So you could do, for example, you could do four minutes at VO2 max pace, then take three minutes to recover, then do four minutes at VO2 max pace, then three minutes to recover, and so on until you're done with the workout. Now, the work period should be longer than 11 minutes when you add up all the time for all your work period intervals. Why is that the case? Well, think about it. If your VO2 max pace can be maintained for 11 minutes, that means to get anything out of it, you're going to want to be at VO2 max pace for longer than 11 minutes because otherwise you could just run straight 11 minutes, right? So your total work period should be longer than 11 minutes. For lactate threshold, the work period should be at least five minutes. The recovery period should be less than the work period again. And the total work period should be greater than 45 minutes. Lactate threshold intervals are going to usually be a much longer workout than VO2 max intervals will be because of that. How many intervals should you do? This is a good question. The number of intervals that you perform is actually arbitrary. The, the goal should be to keep doing intervals until fatigue settles in your body. It's kind of like when weightlifters lift weights to failure. Okay, You're not going to go until you drop down and can't move anymore, but you're going to go until there's a significant amount of fatigue in your body. The point, again, is to challenge your heart and cardiovascular system. And when you do this again and again and again, that's how you build a stronger heart and you increase the size of your left ventricle and you increase the amount of blood that gets pumped out of your heart with each beat, which is an enormous advantage in endurance sports and distance running. Thank you for listening to that. Have a great day.